Now we're here at part four of Lee's Escape. We're on Iron Springs Road. Uh, we're heading in the direction and our next stop is going to be the Old Waynesboro Road, about five miles up here. Um, Iron Springs Road um, is going through the narrow 100 yard wide gap of the Fairfield Gap. And it was here that Lee's troops continued on westward on their escape um, as they followed this road. And this road actually follows a stream which is to our left. Um, a lot of the houses in this area are built of wood and some of the uh, uh, gap carving out of the mountainside, the stone gap is still seen evident in several places along Iron Springs Road. Um, let me get through this bridge here real quick, this one car bridge. <coughs> um, okay. Now after the attack uh, of the 8th Illinois Cavalry uh, was, was, was fended off by the 11th Mississippi, um, they began through this area which is very uh, heavy laden with pine trees. Some people have called this Pine Gap as well. Um, this, this, it's a, it's a pine forest and was back then. Um, it's been also uh, written in some of the diaries of the soldiers who made this escape uh, at M. Bowden's wagon train, uh, which was 17 miles long. And you can imagine what it must have been like uh, for Confederate soldiers on foot <coughs> uh, after fighting heavily for three days in intense heat. Now, marching over mountains through gaps in heavy rain in heavy rain in July um, with the threat of attack coming from their rear at any time um, and if, a, if an opening could be made an attack could be made that was successful they could uh, force the Confederate Army to surrender on the spot and end the war right here in Pennsylvania before having the opportunity to get back into Maryland with the final destination, uh, of course, as crossing the Potomac River into Virginia. So this has been part four of the Lee's Escape series here that we're doing by car uh, just west of the town of Fairfield, uh, heading toward a small town called Greenstone which we'll pick up on in part five. This is part four of Lee's Escape on Gettysburg Battlefield. Okay, this is part Facebook. six of Lee's Escape, and I wanted to start right here. As soon as we cross these railroad tracks, we're coming into the town of Greenstone, PA. Uh, this is the place where a lot of the houses were made of timber, and it's a very scenic and very beautiful town. Um, and as we cross the railroad tracks here at this sharp curve, you can see the house here on the left that says Greenstone, PA. Um, Again, Lee's troops retreating westward uh, through the gaps of the mountains, trying to avoid capture by the, conf uh, the Federal Army that's uh, hot on their trail, knows, knows what's going on. Um, now, when you're on the Iron Springs Road, you're going to drive approximately five and a half miles before you find the old Waynesboro Road, and that's where we're going to make a right on the old Waynesboro Road. Um, when we get to that point on the old Waynesboro Road, uh, there is a Lions Club, uh, and there's a spring behind that Lions Club, the Lions Club rather, that Confederate troops used uh, on July 6th, July 5th, July 6th, 1863, and they also picked wild strawberries. So for some of them, uh, it was refreshing and it was the first time in a long time that they had something to eat. It was also along this road, uh, being the Waynesboro Pike, that Colonel Peter Stagg, his first Michigan Cavalry, attacked the retreating Confederates. Um, okay, so we're coming here. And we're going to turn right on the old Waynesboro Road. Now it was right here that Colonel Peter uh, Stagg's first Michigan Cavalry 
attacked retreating Confederates. As the same as the earlier action, they were unsuccessfully able to uh, capture these wagon trains and force Lee to surrender here on the spot. So, uh, again, the Confederates, probably because of this uh, steep uh, graded ground, were able to get good defensive positions as they escaped Gettysburg uh, and, and defend the uh, a rear guard action of their wagon train so that they could continue toward their goal of crossing the Potomac into Virginia. This has been part six of Lee's escape on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is part seven, Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And you can see a nice log house that goes back toward the time of Lee's escape there on the left. You have to pardon the rain here, it is raining. Um, and we are heading westwardly toward the modern day Route 16, <coughs> um, which will take up in parts eight and beyond. Um, at this point, uh, Lee's army has, has went about 14 miles from Gettysburg. Um, wounded soldiers, dying soldiers, suffering in these long wagon trains, uh, often dying and then being buried on the side of the road. And the army itself uh, probably have been demoralized from their defeat. Are, are doing everything that they possibly can to fend off attack from Union cavalry units who are able to, you know, uh, catch up to them, you know, on horseback. So, again, as as they make their way westward here, um, and as they head toward the towns of like Waynesboro on the old Waynesboro Pike. Um, all their thoughts must be of what, what, what way are we going to get to our destination? What, what, what will be the exact route? Is there a route that someone nearby the, in a Maryland regiment, for instance, made this may be their former home where they live that they can help us? So I'm sure a lot of those types of thoughts and, and messages were, were being passed up and down the line. Um, Again, this is part seven of Lee's escape here on Gettysburg. Hey, this is part eight Facebook. of Lee's escape and probably one of the neater ones. Um, in front of us, this, coming this way was the direction we just came from on the old Waynesboro Road. And then right up here at this intersection here is the current day Waynesboro's Pike as you see the cars go by. Now, as Lee's column made their way up this direction on July 5th, um, he encountered this area here, which is Rolando's Woods. And here in this area uh, became one of the larger battles after the Battle of Gettysburg during Lee's retreat, also known as the Flight at Monterey Pass. Um, there was about 10,000 soldiers that were engaged in this pass right here coming out of the the narrow Fairfield Gap, uh, uh, which accumulated in the Battle of Monterey Pass. Uh, Captain George Emek's men held the approach of the pass, and Union General George Armstrong Custer, supported by artillery, began his advance toward the intersection in front of us where the wagon train was moving. Captain Emek feared he could not hold another onslaught road to find uh, General Jones and pleaded with him for reinforcements. Here, right here in this area where the woods is at, Confederate Captain William Tanner redeployed his cannon near Red Run. Now Red Run uh, is just beyond uh, my this, this tree in front of me here. Uh, he, deployed, he deployed his uh, his artillery near Red Run there. Um, and there was a small wooden bridge at the time that led to the main intersection, which is Route 16 today. Uh, General Custer's men advanced toward the Confederate line where hand-to-hand -hand combat took place. And it was at this time that portions of the 6th Virginia Cavalry and the 4th North Carolina Cavalry re reinforced Captain Emac as he requested. 
as George Armstrong Custer's men approached the actual pass. Now, once Emacs reinforcements got into position, they were deployed on both sides of the Emmitsburg and Waynesboro Turnpike. So that would be directly in front of us there. Um, that is the turnpike, the old turnpike, where uh, Emacs reinforcements were put on both sides of the road. Uh, Union General Judson Kilpatrick ordered his 1st West Virginia Cavalry to report to General Custer. As soon as uh, Charles Capehart's 1st West Virginia Cavalry arrived, they were ordered to charge the Confederate cannon on the other side of the small wooden bridge which sat just there beyond that car. Um, seeing the West Virginia Cavalry in the wooden bridge, <coughs> Captain Tanner ordered the cannon to fire its last two shots just before the gun was captured. Uh, Major Capehart then charged through the mountain pass and began destroying por portions of the Confederate wagon train. Um, about nine miles worth to be exact, um, which there were 17 miles. Federal cavalry began storming through the long line of the wagons, collecting bounty until dawn of that night. So the Battle of Monterey Pass continued down the western slope of uh, South Mountain to Waterloo, which was near the town of Rouseville, and finally ended in Ringgold, Maryland. Kilpatrick's cal cavalry succeeded in capturing and destroying a large, a large number of the wagons of Lee's retreat and took 1,362 Confederate prisoners um, here. Now, a private, Joseph Lesage of the 1st West Virginia Cavalry, in his diary wrote, Then we took our attention to the foremost end of the train, while making more noise than a pack of wild Indians, we find it a hot place. We have, ha we have had it hand to hand. Sabers and revolvers are used rather freely. We soon begin to take in prisoners. The road on which we are charging was a good turnpike and downgrade. I, being mounted on a good horse and being so enthused that when I finally fairly underway, I could not realize whether I was riding or flying. I knew I was going through half the air at a terrible rate. Thus we went until we reached the foot of the mountain. And that was from Private Joseph A. Lesage of the 1st West Virginia Cavalry. <coughs> now today, uh, this is a small park run by the Lions Club called R Rolando Woods Park. And of course there's some swing sets um, and there's, there's a marker. Um, that talks about Judson's uh, Kilpatrick's Calvary where he had captured the prisoners and and then also the spring um, which is called Brown Spring and this of course is a spring um, not too far from the strawberry plants which are over here um, where Confederates had just had a meal uh, probably one of the first meals they had since they left Gettysburg. Uh, Brown Spring during Lee's retreat was the site of where over 1,500 prisoners and nine miles of the wagon train was taken. Um, and down over here is the actual spring. So again, this has been part eight of Lee's escape on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook here at the intersection of the old Waynesboro Road and the current Waynesboro Road, which is Route 16, um, very often overlooked. Uh, this, uh, the Battle of Monterey Pass, very often not talked about, but probably the largest engagement until we get to the town of Funkstown, Maryland on July 11th and 12th of 1863. This is part eight of Lee. Escape on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.